Hello, in this video I will present to you what's new in EDAP Tools version 7.1. The first new feature is slider sensitivity. You can access it by clicking on the three dots and then settings and you will see this field here where we can input uh, a number between 0.1 and 10. Now let's look at uh, the behavior of the slider before adjusting it. Now when I drag the handle to the extreme, it still feels that it's uh, a bit slow. I need to wait quite a lot to get the size that I need. So clicking on settings and changing it to 5 will make it 5 times more responsive. So now it will respond much faster to my changes as you can see. Another new feature are two additional controllers. The first one that I will introduce is the lock controller. You can add as many layers and you can lock them by clicking on the lock controller with Kineflex. And what's great is that you can see the layers were locked. By clicking again, you will unlock the layers. So even if you have some complex configurations, like if we select, for example, this leg, we have three layers here and three layers there, and we want to be able to easily lock it and unlock it. We can just go here and add a lock controller. We create it. It's just a kind of slider. So it uh, inherits all the attributes of the sliders. We can create uh, keyframes and we have settings to add or remove elements. But basically by clicking on the lock controller, it locks its associated layers and by clicking on it again it will unlock them and now if we would like to add more layers to that controller we can just click on the add button and now it will lock both legs and unlock both legs so this is uh, very handy when you need to exclude specific layers um, from modification Another type of controller is the loop controller. I'll select these four layers and I will show you the loop controller. These are all added to the RC slider drop down. There we go. This is the loop controller. Let me change its uh, tint so that we can see it better. So what this controller does is uh, it allows us to control the looping setting of multiple instances uh, together. So by clicking on loop, we'll start just looping. These are four layers currently, or four instances currently attached to this controller. We can create a keyframe for all of them. We can stop them here in this frame. And we can create another one and say go play once. So this is what will happen now. This is basically it. You can loop, stop and play once a bunch of symbols with uh, the loop controller. Another new feature, private ranges for first frame sliders. These are containers which have just numbers from 1 to 60. Let me create the first frame slider for this symbol horizontal green slider there you go and uh, dragging it with uh, kineflex will just uh, have us loop through the content of this symbol normally we can define a, a frame range using create frame range command and i can do this just uh, for the sake of this demonstration create frame range and I can limit the frame range, say, between 20 and 30. Okay, so now if I drag the handle, we'll only loop between frame 20 and 30. What's uh, been added in version 7.1 is the ability to create private ranges for individual sliders, which will override the default frame range. 
click on the three dots and there's an, an added button in the dialog called create private range. Click on it and enter the symbol to look at uh, what's happened here. So we have a second range and if we look at the layer name we'll see that it's rather long. We can customize this part here which says your custom name. Let me just uh, customize it by calling it green so that this is the green slider something meaningful and now I can adjust which frames to display by dragging the green slider so the standard range will loop through these frames while my private range for this slider will loop between 1 and 10 so if we go out and drag here you see it goes between 1 and 10 now we can add another slider to this symbol. Let me make it kind of orange, it should be contrasty enough. So there we go, we have an orange slider, which at this stage will work with the standard range, but we can create a private range for this one as well. So private range, close, and now when we go inside, we'll see this is the new private range let's uh, call it orange and with this one we can define a third range so 45 to 60 let's just leave it like this and test this slider goes between 1 and 10 while this slider goes between 45 and 60. the idea for these private ranges is that you can have a container that holds uh, various animated sections for a specific body part. And by having private ranges, we can very quickly and easily refer to these specific sections. So imagine a torso container, which has a turnaround, and then it has, uh, say, another turnaround, but from a slightly different uh, perspective, say a lower angle, or you may have some uh, a specific animations where the body twists, bends and so on. And you can define various uh, private ranges and then very quickly access sections of this uh, very long timeline. Let me just get rid of these frame ranges. It's very easy, just delete the layers. This is uh, how easy it is to remove the frame ranges if you don't need them. So now let me go frame one to sync uh, the symbols and add this uh, other symbol to the control group of our slider and now this slider will control both if you click on create frame range it will create private ranges for both symbols now if we enter this one we'll see there is a frame range here so I'll say okay this one will go from 1 to 20 I'm not gonna name it this time and then I can go from 40 to 60 in this one and then this one slider will control different sections of these symbols the first will go from 1 to 20 and the second one will go from 40 to 60 and of course, um, as I showed you, we can control the speed of the slider as well. If I type 10, it will become very fast. The next feature is in addition to layer outlines or guide toggle. If you remember, it's uh, this command which uh, allows you to quickly switch between outline and normal view with a uh, stage selection so if we go like that and we press um, f5 the shortcut you will go in outline mode now it has a, an extra mode and by default it's disabled so we'll need to go to adapt control panel and look for uh, layer outline and guide toggle so uh, here and we can choose between different actions so the default is outline toggle but we can also choose visibility toggle or toggle between the three states so if we go outline and visibility toggle and 
press F5, the first press will go for outline, then it will hide the layer, and then it will show the layer. So it will literally go through three states instead of instead of two. Of course, uh, if something's already hidden, you can't select it on the stage, so you will need to actually have the layer selected in the timeline. And uh, you can choose the different uh, mode, so you can limit it to only visibility toggle like like this, and now it will only do the visibility toggle. Another important change is that the strictness of service layer names has been reduced. So now you can actually add suffixes to magnet targets or controllers layers. So in this case, let me just demonstrate. In the other versions, all magnet target layers had to be strictly named as magnet targets. You couldn't name them as anything else because they uh, would stop working. Well, now you can just add a suffix and call this, say, right, right arm, and it will still keep working. And we can call this uh, magnet target layer nick, and it will still work. Now, keep in mind these need to be suffixes, so the layer names must always start with the service name. But if we go outside and, uh, and drag this element away and press uh, Smart Magnet Joint, we'll see that uh, the magnet target still works. And if we turn this torso in one direction or another, uh, you can see that uh, snapping's functional. This means that everything magnet targets related works. And I can demonstrate this. Uh, with uh, the controllers layer as well. We can separate the controllers, say, legs and arms controllers, cut these and create a new layer and paste them here. Uh, copy and paste the name, but this time I'll call these um, arms. And I'll call this one legs. And you will see that these controllers will still work perfectly well. So this is a usability improvement. You can be more organized with your service layers and service objects. And finally, thumbnail generation in Smart Graphic Control and Transposer, specifically in Animate, has become much faster. Let me demonstrate. And this is how quickly the 60 thumbnails were created for the symbol. And let me create another 60 thumbnails for the other one. There you go. Now uh, let me add the thumbnails for the bunny's head in transposer. Previously, it used to take a lot more time in animate than in flash, but now it's uh, almost comparable. This is it. We hope that you will enjoy EDAPTools 7.1.